Next, we're going to look at integration. Right? So, given a vector valued function, um, let's say r of t, well, um, an antiderivative. Um, uh, R of T oops. is a, you know, let me just write VVF for vector valued function. Let's say R of T such that um, little r is equal to big R prime, as usual, right? Um, the so-called the general antiderivative set of, or some people like to think of this set of all antiderivatives, or just the you know one with the arbitrary constant of integration. Well, we're going to write the general antiderivative as an indefinite integral, as usual, right? Right? And the definite integral, and the definite integrals of vector valued functions on their own. Um, are not something that we need to compute very often, but we'll we'll throw it in just for, for completeness. So definite integral on let's say a b is going to be given by well, we want to think in terms of a definition. So the integral from a to b of r of t dt will be the limit as say the norm of delta t norm of a partition goes to zero of the sum i goes from 1 to n of not f, uh, careful, r of ti times delta ti, and that's going to be for some Yeah, well, not for some, but for partitions of the interval from A to B, right? So we, um, for all possible partitions of the interval from A to B, you take the limit as the norm of the partition, so the length of the largest subinterval goes to zero. If you like, take a uniform partition, take the limit as n goes to infinity, um, right? Usual sort of limit of a Riemann sum kind of story. Um, all right, so those are the definitions, but they're not, you know, they're not the working definitions. Um, and so, of course, if, uh, if this R of T, if R of T is equal to, well, let's say X of T, Y of T, but of course you can do this in three dimensions as well. Um, well, this is going to be the integral of you know, x of t dt, and then the integral of y of t dt, right? We take derivatives term by term, so it makes sense that we should also take antiderivatives term by term. And down here, if you think about it, now you can work through the details carefully, but if you just think about it for a minute, um, what have we what have we seen with with sort of you know calculus and vector valued functions? Well, first of all. You know, so this is a vector, this is a scalar. So this is just, you know, a scalar multiple of a, of a vector quantity. Um, and then we're going to add them up. We have a sum, right? But when we add vectors, we add corresponding components. When we take the limit of a vector valued function, we take the limit component by component, right? Um, and 
So you can kind of go through the details and realize that what you're going to get is sort of the limit of the sum of the xi's in the first component, and then the limit of the sum of the yi's in the second component. And not surprisingly, this becomes the definite integral of x of t, and then the definite integral of y of t. And if we were in three dimensions, maybe also throw in an integral for z of t, right? Um, it's, it's kind of exactly what you would expect. And, and then for those definite integrals, these are now just regular real valued functions. And so um, if possible, you can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? Use your usual integration techniques to, to handle each of those integrals.